Hi, this is Tanya K. Taylor with River Rain Creative. Today I have one word for you that is instead. Instead. Let me read you this verse from Proverbs 11, 8 in the Amplified Classic. The uncompromisingly righteous is delivered out of trouble and the wicked gets it instead. Actually, it says it gets into it instead. Let me do that again. Proverbs 11, 8, Amplified Classic, it says, the uncompromisingly righteous is delivered out of trouble and the wicked gets into it instead. Uh oh. Instead. That is a very important word, and the Lord just dropped that into my spirit. I believe it was this morning, either in the wee hours of this morning after I was awakened. Instead. So I started thinking about instead. And the ultimate, of course, is that instead of us having to go to the cross and go to hell to pay for our sins. Jesus Christ went instead. Thank goodness. So I started thinking about, that is the ultimate, of course. I started thinking about other insteads. And a lot of that has to do with our choices. You know, the salesman, and I've been a salesperson myself, or and a teacher and a parent, and one of these strategies that we all can use is to give the person we're talking to two choices would you like this or this instead we don't ask them do you want anything they can say yes or no we say we give choices but the main point about that is when you choose God in his way instead of the devil's way the world's way your flesh's way then that builds your spirit it's like building muscles in the gym it strengthens you to make the right choice instead of the wrong one the next time. And the more solid you get in your choice making, which should be always based on the Word of God, then the more the Lord can trust you with weightier, more important, more influential things. So that wasn't planned actually I, I say lord i open my mouth and ask that you fill it but that's an excellent point i love it when he talks to me and i'm like wow that's so good i know it didn't come from me <laughs> i want it to all come from him so here are some more verses that have the word instead i put that into the amplified classic it came out with 90 something i believe so wow i just have a few for now we are looking at a mirror that gives only a dim or blurred reflection of reality as it as in a riddle or enigma but then when perfection comes and that means when we're changed to be exactly like Christ as we meet him in the air from the grave or being alive those in the grave will go first we shall see in reality and face to face we shall see Jesus as he is so the rest of the verse says now I know in part we only see in part and know in part M perfectly not perfectly but then I shall know and understand fully and clearly even in the same manner as I have been fully and clearly known and understood by God now God understands us perfectly clearly fully he knows every word that's on our tongue before we speak it he knows every thought in our mind before we think it because he is outside of time he is the eternity of eternities. He's timeless. He sees everything at once. All of our lives, he sees at once. Thank God. <laughs> Woo, thank goodness he sees the end from the beginning. He knows who is going to choose him instead of their own way or the devil or the world's way. And he arranges circumstances to reward us and to continue to train us and help us to choose him instead of a lesser way it's a building process like anything else it's a training experience like life is so if he says in is it proverbs or deuteronomy maybe both probably several places all throughout the bible actually maybe a little bit hidden but he says choose life that you may live choose life and life is Jesus, life is the Word, life is the Spirit of God, life is God's way. All of them are one. So, that's another preaching, but it still is part of this. So, that was 1 Corinthians 13, 12, Amplified Classic. So, we are never going to know everything about everything 
no matter how long we pray, how much word that we ingest and meditate on and proclaim because we're not supposed to know everything. If we knew everything about everything, we would not need faith. So faith is trusting God when you don't know everything. And let me tell you, God is faithful. He is utter, utterly trustworthy. He always performs his word. He's always good, always watching over us, always, and he's just amazing. He is awesome, and he is the only awesome one to me. I can only use that word for him or something that he does. His faithfulness is awesome, full of awe. I am full of awe. His faithfulness. He cannot be unfaithful. Hallelujah. If you ever think he's been unfaithful, and I've had doubts because the devil likes to sling them when things don't go like we plan, like we plan, which may not be God's plan. Maybe we've chosen our plan instead of his plan. And maybe it seems like he didn't come through. Oh, no, that's a lie. God is always faithful. And he's faithful to forgive. He's faithful to cleanse. He's faithful to redirect us. He is faithful. He's the author and finisher of our faith. Hallelujah. Or we wouldn't have any. He's the one that gave us the faith to understand we need Jesus and to receive him to start with. He gave us the blood. He gave us the faith. He gives us everything. He's the one that gives us the faith to know there's a God, to know that we need him, to know that we need more of him, to know that we need to keep learning and growing and changing. He's the one that helps us know he loves us no matter what in spite of all the mess. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord faithful father he is the good good father here's another one for you for the law never made anything perfect that means trying to keep the rules we can't that's why Jesus had to come he kept the law perfectly and was the perfect sacrifice on the cross for us to shed his blood that was pure for he was tempted in every way but never sinned wow but that's the truth. That's why he could go to the cross and pay for our sin debt instead of us. Our lives wouldn't have been enough anyway. For the law never made anything perfect, but instead a better hope is introduced through which we now come close to God. And that better hope is Jesus, the hope of nations, the hope of the world. That's Hebrews 7.19. And let's see, I wrote an article and posted it on Faith Writers if you want to go check out the whole thing. Here's another, Psalm 23.3. Oh yes, he leads us in right paths for his namesake. This does not have the word instead. But he refreshes and restores my life, myself. He leads me in the paths of righteousness, uprightness and right standing with him. Not for my earning it, but for his namesake. That's grace. Instead of works. Jesus came to give us grace. We can never work for our salvation. Instead, Jesus' blood gives us the grace and the faith to receive what he did as his life was given instead of ours. Glory. Woo, glory, glory, glory. Like my pastor says, I'm happy all over more than anywhere else. I preach myself happy. Amen. Every time. <laughs> when you're here or when you're not here. Okay. For the Lord God helps me. Therefore have I not been ashamed or confounded. That means confused. Therefore have I set my face like a flint and I know I will not be put to shame. That's Isaiah 57. It does not have the verse in the word instead. But when we trust in the Lord, we have peace and confidence and victory and direction and abundance and joy instead of depression frustration anger loss fear and whatever else is not of God Ooh, I love it when he preaches to me because I didn't have this scripted just the verses all right here we go but the so as we follow him instead and he's the one that helps us do it and desire it of the world if we follow him instead even that can even come down to eating something healthy instead of junk and I've eaten junk too whatever you're doing that honors God and is based on the word instead of something else 
that's strengthening you to make the better choice instead next time instead of a lesser choice. When you make the right choices instead of the wrong ones, you're going forward, which is inherent in every human that's thinking right. We want to go forward. God made us to grow and dominate and be victorious and successful, to be productive and be promoted, so to be prosperous in every way. And that's much more than just money, although money is included. So when we make the right choices instead of the wrong ones, then we are bringing honor to God and success to our lives and other people see God's work in our lives and He's glorified and they're drawn to Him. Maybe, it may not seem like it, but your life is an example to other people. You have influence on other people. So do you want to be a good influence instead of a bad influence? Yes, that's the right answer. Yes, we do. Especially as believers with the Holy Spirit in us who is helping us to choose the right way instead of the wrong way. Glory to God. So as we make, here's the point with Proverbs 4, 18. As we make the right choices instead of the wrong ones, then our paths, our lives are becoming clearer. What God wants and His pleasure in us, His delight in us, and how we're bringing Him honor and glory so that other people are seeing Him is made plain to us more and more as we choose Him, His way, instead of a lesser way. When we choose, when we're doing our best, His mercy keeps us because none of us are, are perfect. We've all missed it. And there's a potential to still miss it because we're not perfect, but we're being perfected when we choose Him instead of wrong choices. So our lives are getting brighter, more peaceful, more joyful, more prosperous in every way as we choose His way instead. And I'm preaching to myself too because there's always more. Even Dr. Kenneth Copeland and, and others that seem to be the very top leaders in, in the universe that know God the most intimately, that, yes, have the most money. And money is not everything, but those that are closest to God often do have a lot of money, a lot of assets, because God's prospering them because they have chosen Him instead of the world, the devil, in the lesser way. So, here we go. One more. I'm going to end with what I started with. The uncompromisingly righteous is delivered out of trouble, and the wicked gets into it instead. Now, let me clarify this. That's Proverbs 8, 11, 8. God doesn't want anybody to die. That's what the word perish means in King James. He doesn't want anyone to die or suffer. His plan was for all of us to have a heavenly, wonderful, free, abundant life, satisfying life. That's why he made the Garden of Eden and put Adam and Eve, who were perfect then, into it. That's God's plan from the beginning. The devil messed it up. Adam and Eve agreed. And that plunged all of humankind into sin forever. But at the proper time, and God never stopped loving us, He just, He's given man a free will. And man messed up, and man continues to mess up, but it's the Holy Spirit of God that helps us to choose Him and His way instead of the wrong way. So He sent Jesus at the proper time to restore to us what we had at the beginning in Adam and Eve. But as the Lord showed me, and even our pastors have said this, we can't be offended at Adam and Eve because we probably would have done the same thing. <laughs> so, let's just ask the Lord to help us every day. And as soon as you wake up, even in the middle of the night, is the best, the best idea. Say, Lord, help me focus on you. I bind to my mind your mind in Jesus' name. I ask that you think to my mind. I open my mouth and ask that you fill it. Help me to focus on your word. Bring to my remembrance your word. Help me to make choices that please you instead of choices that please the enemy, the world, other people, or my flesh. Because even some other people could want you to make choices just because they want to have their way instead of what's the really right thing to do. That's why we all need a very personal relationship with the Holy Spirit. And if you have received Jesus, you have it. He's inside of you. He is your wisdom and revelation. And 
he will never speak against the word of God. So choose life instead of death. Not talking about not jumping off buildings and and not eating a lot of junk food. That's part of it, but there's a lot more to it. So that's another teaching. But remember, oh by the way, in Proverbs eleven eight, thank you Lord, He's reminding me. When it says uncompromisingly righteous, and this is the amplified version, that doesn't mean you're barely born again and you're living like the world or the devil or doing what you want to and letting your flesh take over and doing things that are against God because you know you can be forgiven. That is not what that means. If you do stuff like that, if you make those choices instead of choices that align with the Word of God, you're going to have trouble. Ask me how I know. The Lord's helped me to change a lot through the years and gain a lot of wisdom. And my life is so much more heavenly now. Truly. It is possible. And it's wonderful. He can do it for you if he can do it for me. So uncompromisingly righteous does not mean perfect. But it means doing all you know to do to choose the way of God instead of the way of the world, the flesh, or the devil. And the way you do that is to get in the word of God and know what it says. Learn it and go by. And the Lord will help you. So... Go forth and continue to choose the Lord instead of the wrong way, and you'll be so glad.